Hey guys, welcome back. This video is all about filmmaking and filmmaking mistakes that I see quite a bit of. So if you're just beginning your filmmaking career, this will help you avoid the pitfall of these mistakes and set you on the path to success. If you've been doing filmmaking for a while and you may have created mistakes and not be aware of it, that you've fallen back into bad habits, then this video will help you as well. Let's get into it. Well, already, just to let you know, I did a lot of the filming for this video using the iPhone 14 Pro. So if I can create good content, filmmaking, using an iPhone 14 Pro, if you're using a higher-end camera, DLSR, mirrorless, anything, you should be able to get even better quality out of yours. So without further ado, let's just jump into these common mistakes that I see a lot of people making. And the first one is white balance. Boom. Wow, looks bad you can adjust your white balance. Now, if you're using a smartphone, you can get different apps where you can control your white balance. Make sure that you're using the proper white balance, especially if you're going in and out of different areas, you're gonna to have to change your white balance. So you can see how bad it can be when you don't set your white balance properly. And the next one is ISO, your film speed. You need to keep your film speed low. When you increase the film speed, noise and artifacting gets brought in with it. So here's a piece of footage I shot with the Sony ZV-1 and it was set at ISO 100. Looks nice and clean. You can see I'm using the smartphone there to get a little bit of footage, but the video footage is clean. Now, what happens if I bump the ISO up? So I'm going to kind of cheat this for you, but it'll give you the effect to what I'm talking about. I'm gonna run that same piece of footage, but I've artificially added the noise in post. But check out this same piece of footage with high ISO. Hmm, not very good. That is nasty looking video. Let me run these two clips side by side and you'll see what I'm talking about. Look at the difference between that. That is night and day. So you want to keep your ISO as low as you possibly can to get the best quality you can out of your device. So keep that ISO down low. Now another thing I see happen a lot is you're not color grading your footage. You're accepting it out of the camera the way it is or your phone you might have even shot and log but it's not color graded put an s curve on there drop out lots on there do something check out this piece of footage it's not color graded it's shot and log look at the lack of saturation the lack of color the lack of contrast also with it, it doesn't look very good it's a nice area but it doesn't look very good now let's take that same piece of footage and actually add some color grading to it wow dramatically different. Look at the vibrant color. Look at the contrast we have. Now let's run these two pieces side by side so you can really see the difference between them. Ho oh, ho, there you go. Look at that. Look at the difference. And it took me no time at all to color grade that little piece of footage. So make sure that when you're doing your filmmaking, don't just accept what's coming out of your camera. Add a bit of brightness, add a bit of contrast, vibrancy, something. Do something to get the best possible color you can out of it. Don't just accept what the device is giving you. You are the boss of it, not it of you. Now, another one that I find really irritating and I still struggle with myself because it is a bit of a challenge. When you're running footage and you're playing some music to that footage, you're just slapping that song on there and hoping it sticks. Well, check out this piece of footage and you let me know what you think. Wow, that music didn't really suit that too well. You should be adding the music to your video and editing to the song, not just slapping the song on there, like I say, and hoping it sticks. So let's run that same piece of footage, but with what I think is a bit better piece of music, and I tried to edit it to it. Check it out. What do you think? I think that was a lot better. It was more upbeat. And I liked when she started kind of sinking, that song kind of sounded like she was going down the drain because I edited to that piece. So you can see the difference that the music can play in your videos. So pick the appropriate song and edit to it and it'll dramatically improve the quality of your filmmaking. Another thing while we're talking about music 
is, and I've seen this and I had trouble with it initially and got called out on it, and that is not stabilizing, normalizing your audio across the board. So as I'm talking right now, it's all at one level. But what happens if all of a sudden I start screaming and the volume goes way up? Now, I apologize to anybody on a headphone that that may have totally blown their ears, but that's what happens. And the audio is kind of going all over the board and it goes really loud again. It's very irritating. So you want to stabilize, normalize the volume of your audio all your audio, your music, the song, the talking, all of it, you want to try and normalize it so you're not getting all these peaks and valleys. It's very irritating. And like I say, I apologize again to anybody on headphones when I kind of yelled out there because it is very distracting and very annoying. Now, another common problem I see, not just in the world of photography, but in filmmaking, and that is composition. And here is one that drives me absolutely crazy in the world of composition. Look at me walking on this piece of footage. And look where I am though, on the frame. I'm right at the edge in front of me. You can't see what I'm walking into. You can't see where I'm going. I find that, I don't know whether it's my OCD or not, but that drives me crazy. I find that is very bad because you can't see what's there. I got all this room behind me, but I don't have the room in front of me. So let me run that clip again, but let's reverse the composition. So now I've got less room behind me, more room in front of me. Now, doesn't that be a little more appealing? You can see where I'm walking. You can see what I'm walking into. Let me run these two clips side by side so you can see the difference between them. Boy, again, night and day difference with that composition. I definitely prefer with all that foreground in front of me, you can see where I'm walking into. And as I say, that's a common mistake that I see quite frequently done. And I, I don't know, OCD or not, I find that really annoying being on the edge of the frame like that. So make sure that when you're doing your filmmaking that you abide by composition. Just because you're doing filmmaking versus photography, you can forget about it, you can't. It's very important to keep your compositional rules in mind when you're doing all your work. So there you go, short and sweet some of the most common things that I see. Now, if you're beginning, this will give you the good foundation to step off on the right foot so you don't make mistakes right away and you can get your career up and running. Pros, people making common mistakes, falling back into bad habits. Hopefully, this will make you aware of some of the bad habits you may have fallen back into because you have to be constantly aware, myself included. I am not perfect. I do the best I can, but these are common mistakes that we can all correct quite easily. So that's it for this one. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you're aware when I post new videos. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. So until the next time.